Hey everybody, P. Dave Turner, executive producer and host of your Break It Down show, bringing you today's show with a, you're just going to love this. First off, hello, oh it's the Pete's, Pete Koch and Pete A. Turner over at Q's on Wilshire. You know how we do it. We recorded this show. Actually, it's kind of crazy. We've held onto this one for a while. I'll tell you why in a second. But this goes back to December 2019, before all the COVID craziness went on, back when life was just a little bit nor- more normal, hard, but normal. Uh, the reason why we held on to the show was that she has got a, a up, upcoming television show that she couldn't talk about openly until basically right about now. And she's there's a, a I guess you call it a reality fitness crazy challenge show where she's jumping and flying and kicking and punching and doing all these things. And it's hosted by The Miz. And so if you like The Miz, if you like reality shows, you like, it's sort of like Survivor with like the physical challenges. It's sort of like that. So she's finally able to talk about that. And that's why we've held on to the show for so long. It's still super relevant though. Uh, one of the things you're going to love about Andrea is that she has done everything. I mean, she's been a division one athlete in two separate sports and yet had an eating disorder. She couldn't stop eating and was bulimic and it was killing her. And then, so she, over 15 years, she battled it and finally whooped it. And now she's in her fifties. And when you go to her Instagram page, it's, it's a Lee fitness. If you go there, she works out with Pete Koch all the time. You should be following both Pete Koch and Andrea Logan, but if you go and look and you'll see just how rock solid she is and how fantastic her fitness is, is represented on there. She's just a machine and an inspiration. So if you're in any way feeling like, Hey, um, I, I need to get inspired, watch both of these people work out on their Instagram and, and you're going to get inspired to do more. It's really, it's really an incredible episode. So again, the Pete's at Q's on Wilshire with Andrea Logan. You're going to love it. And we talk also about Andrea's business on the side with her brother, where they get people in shape under the umbrella of, of one of those uh, crazy Spartan races. So they, they do uh, the fitness side of that. So it's a lot in here in this episode to, to get us focused on how we go out and do things, how we stay in shape and, and how we live our life better as we as we enter the later stages of life or prepare to enter the later stages of life. Even if you're young, you got to take care of your brain, got to take care of your body, got to put on muscle so that you can hold on to it as it gets harder to put and keep muscle on your body. All right, enough about that. Hey, thank you everybody for supporting the show. We're getting so many great notices and and people are talking and engaging and I just, I love it. Thank you so much, all of you who listen. It's really neat uh, to, to see all that and all the countries that are jumping on board. Uh, fantastic. And again, shout out to India that is exploding. You guys are really listening to the show and I appreciate it. One last thing on all of these things, save the brave, save the brave.org. Help us help veterans want to stay alive. Save the brave.org. Go there. Small amount of money each month. That's all we ask for. And then you can help us do what we do best. And that's take care of one another. Save the brave, save the brave.org. Here comes Andrea Logan. Lions Rock Productions. This is Jay this Moore. This is Greg Proof. This is Jordan Harbinger. This is Dexter from The Offspring. This is Nathan this is East. Sebastian Younger. This is Rick Morata. This is Stuart Copeland. This is Mick Gillette. This is Andy Summers. Hey, this is Scott Baxter. This is Gabby Reese. This is Rob Bell. Hey, this is John Leon Guerrero. Hey, and this is Pete A. Turner. Hey, this is Andrea Logan, and we are listening to The Break It Down Show. Yeah, it's Pete and Pete once again at Q's on Wilshire. Thank you to them, as always, for hosting. And uh, whenever we get together, uh, it's always fun to have the Pete's on, on the air. And it's great to meet you. And I'm going to let Pete introduce you because he's you're his guest. Andrea right. Logan is a friend of mine. We go back about a, a decade. And we actually met uh, through social media because I'm living in Los Angeles. And at the time, Andrea was living in North Carolina. But I knew that we had a lot of things in common. I was impressed with the things that she was doing. She was um, She's a fitness professional and exercise expert and she has a master's degree in exercise science and she was teaching people group exercise and coaching people in a private setting and working with young athletes and uh, long story short is we ended up uh, in, in a great friendship she moved to los angeles and i helped her do that and it, it's gone very very well as she's a, a leading fitness professional here in los angeles and she has this, an interesting story. So uh, lots of interesting stories. I would say I'm biased, but she does and she cares about people and she's passionate about exercise and helping people. So Andrea, nice to have you with us. Thank you. You started when at an early age in athletics was a big part 
of your life. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, I was fortunate enough to have a very active father who, um, when I turned the age five, I was put into sports and he coached me from basketball to softball to tennis. So he was my coach all the way up until junior high. And then I was fortunate enough to have a guru uncle into the Hall of Fame of Basketball, who started the first basketball camp in the nation. So from the age seven till my senior year in high school, I was uh, camping it in basketball. Wow. And then with all that background, it sent me to um, a double sport, D1 volleyball and D1 basketball. So I was fortunate enough to play two sports. You are not terribly tall. No, so not at all. So you must be a setter, point no, guard type person. No, I was person. actually, I was an outside hitter and a, a strong forward. Were you really? Yeah, I can jump out the roof though. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, had, right. I had some good hops. So. No kidding. Yeah, yes, I'm not that tall, but no, I was outside hitter and strong forward. You were a Division One athlete in two sports. Yes, I How was. How rare is that? Yeah, I was fortunate. I really was. Yeah. Very, extremely fortunate. So, uh, and everybody can follow you on Instagram. That's the best place, probably. And yes, it's, it's A Lee Fitness. A Lee Fitness. Andrea Logan. If you get lost, spell you, that. A L E I G H, and then Fitness. F I T N E S S. And if you can't find her, you can certainly find Pete Koch on Instagram and ask him. He will tell you. And if not, you can always give me Pete A Turner. So nice and easy. Yeah. Holy cow! So, do, what do you like better, basketball or volleyball? I'm from North Carolina basketball. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Can you play like just goofing around at the beach volleyball, or because like you're so good at it? Because I I knew a lot of people that have played. And they're like, I just can't play smack it over the. the that, net. that is frustrating when you're just playing smack it because you know you do want a little bit of organization. Yeah. But you know the sad thing is being out here in California. I played East Coast beach volleyball. I haven't touched one. <laughs> Yeah. Since I've lived out here in California, have not. What's the difference between East Coast and West? Do we have a style difference or something? No, it seems like um, it's easier to get a court, quality players, because I have noticed out here you've got your kind of leagues, and there's some really, really good players. So yeah. if you haven't touched a ball in a long time, yeah. you put yourself back to the end of the line. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but no, I actually, uh, basketball is my favorite mm. in college, basketball to watch. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about your CrossFit background and uh, your passion for CrossFit and sort of where that, that fits into your life. I've always loved uh, when CrossFit first came about, but I was, again, um, in the beginning part of CrossFit. I trained Marines for about 13 years. Oh, wow. So um, we brought, we adapted the CrossFit back in the early days, right when it first started. So I was on the cutting edge of CrossFit, and I've watched it develop to where it is today. And it was a passion. And then it also gave me a way after leaving college, not a place to compete seriously. It gave me a, a platform to allow me as well to become a CrossFit athlete and to teach your everyday people off the street, how to become a great athlete. So. I've been to a few of those competitions, supporting friends and everything. And one of the things that terrified, because I did CrossFit early on as a military guy uh. and deployed, and they're like, just get up this pull-up bar any way possible, 25, you know, and yeah, then yeah. go do that. And then go. So and we would do like the Ronda or whatever the exercise yeah, was. Yeah, you know, yeah, like, yeah. Oh, Ronda's <laughs> yeah. nasty. But um, it, sometimes at these competitions, it seems like putting the bar above your head with terrible form is way too easy to do. Like no one's like, Hey, you're done. Stop. Yeah. And they're bent back and just, just like probably any sport, even just like a regular person lifting in the gym, everything can have its danger. Yeah. It really can. Um, CrossFit has its really powerful side. And then again, like what you see that does unfortunately happen. Um, as I've gotten older, I do not like putting a bar over my head as much. Yeah. Um, but I still love that competitive edge that you have when you do CrossFit. Yeah, I've got a friend that's got rebuilt shoulders and knees, and he's like, I'm about to get back into CrossFit. And he's a, he's a really heavy guy. Mm -hmm. And like the last time I saw him at CrossFit, he was doing a handstand. And I'm like, what are you doing? 
Like, go get in a pool. He, so, I mean, I know you can work out that way, but he doesn't have the common sense to, like, not continue to destroy his body as he's doing it. Correct. Now, that's when your coaches come in play. Right. That okay. should help you realize where your boundaries are. But that's the great thing with CrossFit that has allowed a lot of athletes to cross into the OCR races now. So it's given it a, a different athlete where you're not throwing a heavy bar over your head but you're still doing great things yeah. climbing ropes walls and just just for clarity ocr stands for obstacle, obstacle course, course racing, racing. Yeah. yeah and that's that's your tough mutter and your gladiator and, and, runs and the spartans and, yeah and the spartan runs yeah yeah and which is an which is a new area Right, that yes. you're, you're tackling on. Tell us a little bit about the OCR and the and the, uh, the and you've got a relationship with the Tough Mudder company and and what, tell us a little bit about what that's what's going on there. Again, I'm going to just keep using the word fortunate. <laughs> um, I've been blessed in my life, and I got into uh, Tough Mudders, which I really like because it's community based. Right. CrossFit's community based, and it can take anyone even someone who is in a wheelchair and the community will help them complete the whole race if you can't do an obstacle you have people that can help you so it's really community based which i love and crossfit taught me that as well and then the military is a big community and family as well so i i've been doing tough mutters and then my brother who is a banker Retired from banking, and he gave me a phone call. He said, let's open a gym. My mouth dropped wide open because me and my brother have not had a relationship like that at all. He wants to change people's lives. So I said, you don't want to start one by yourself, ground up. Yeah. There is a brand new company that's just transferred over into the Tough Mudder Gyms, which is a boutique gym. But you already have your branding. So my brother in North Carolina, Charlotte, decided he was going to do that. So he bought a territory. Well, if you know my brother, owning a gym, is he needs more of more. A, a challenge. It's a bigger problem. So he decided he was going to buy the Tough Mudder Boot Camp side. Holy cow. So now, not only are we developing gyms, we're developing them across the nation. So my passion for Tough Mudder has now turned into a passion of creating gyms across the nation. So are you going to be like the, the chief uh, workout officer or something, the, the CWO? They have someone that is now developing programs that they had already on staff. I'm going to come in and help the uh, head honcho develop. So I'm going to be part of it to help create these wonderful programs across the nation. So again, I'm fortunate I've stepped in and the right place at the right time what do you think obstacle course racing he sort of fits into the grand scheme and then and then with you know when within that so people understand when you say to someone tough mutter they say oh yeah those are those really challenging races and you're going to get muddy and there's going to be obstacles and it's 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 fun it's challenging but fun right, right. and it's community it can very often be community based because yeah. people will say Hey, I'm gonna. They get everybody, uh, half a dozen people from their office together, and they go and, and wear the same color shirt and run around together, that type of thing. And now that the Tough Mudder uh, organization is is opening up community based kind of uh, community or when we think of a, a boot camp workout, we, we obviously we don't think of one person going to the gym and exercising in isolation. We think of a bunch of people exercising together. And maybe with music going on and a little bit of fun there too, right? So yes. that's what's happening with the in the boot camp environment. And do you do you feel like that's the future? Like we've seen that with CrossFit, but I think CrossFit's maybe peaked out. But where does where the Tough Mudder boot camps? Where does that where does that fit in? We want to separate the OCR Tough Mudder race with the Tough Mudder boot camp class classes because we want again to build athletes and again it's community based you are working out with a partner of two three or four at each station and when we have what i mean by stations you can have an exercise with three people three different exercises there's a clock going but then there's also a television that is showing you the movements mm. if you forget what the movements are then once that time frame you go to the next station and it's a, just a big circuit 
And, but it's all community based. You're pushing your partner. You're cheering your partner on. It's giving you a feel of family and support Mm -hmm. because a lot of times when you go into a regular gym, you're just speaking to people and they're, you know, you're on your own. Yeah. This is building a great community, um, family. And then you're also kind of taking care of each other while you're in class as well. So that's what it is. And Tough Mudder, since it's a national brand name, it's already out there that helps build. But when you think of boot camp, unfortunately, people think of the military. Yeah. Big word. Intimidating. This is to build a person right off the street that has never exercised before. And we're able to get them to reach their goals and watch them grow and push them. And you, you'll you see a big difference. But again, you're in that family and community. Yeah, that community thing is neat. Uh, I've done boot camps, a lot of them, uh, as an actual military guy. And it's funny when you go do the workout part, it's nothing like what actually like the, the first two words you hear in a, in a military boot camp are fall in. And then the words extend to the left. <laughs> yeah. And, and you're like, I, I'm like, aren't we going to stand with the arms all extended? And then like, yeah. up, no. Okay. So um, it's neat that it's community because you're right. You go to the gym and you are really isolated. Yes. You know, maybe you're doing an exercise the wrong way. No one's going to mess with you. You're like, you just mm-hmm. go do whatever. Folks are there to socialize. But I, I'm there to work. It would be yeah. great to have some kind of, of task-based things. It, it seems like these kind of workouts blend. And you guys are the pros. It seems like you have a nice blend of anaerobic and aerobic and plyometric things yes. all mixed together. It is. It is. And um, it's sort of like similar to a hit, but they're taking from kettlebell swings to box jumps to battle ropes. We are teaching pull-ups. We teach rope climbs, um, push-ups. Mm. Um, there's a turf in the middle where we have sled runs. So it's, it's, it's a mixture of everything and which keeps your body moving you're using different apparatuses and it's it's just i it, you have all different kind of boutique gyms but this one has a different little flavor to it that's more unique it's 45 minute based um but it is really the real big key is is the community where you're working out with your partners my buddy Brian, who runs uh, Power Rowing and Brookline Mass, that's a plug for him because he's a great guy. But uh, he was saying, you can come to my gym and I'll make your cardiovascular system work better. But if you don't eat right, I, I can't change what you look like. Correct. Correct. So is there an element to that with what you guys well, do? Well, yes, we do. They Inside the gyms, they will have nutritional um, kind of tips, but they run challenges as well. Mm. So you can sign up for your nutritional challenges based on your classes and then you're given your your food your diet and how it works so which is again everybody's kind of cannibal to everybody else so yeah 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 Yeah, nutrition is really the key the key element i mean i can train somebody all day long for two hours every day if their nutrition is not doing right it's really fighting against me what i'm teaching them yeah Exercise is so important, and a lot of people confuse the reality that exercise is the, the, the most important aspect of weight loss. Because 71% of the population in some way battles with their weight, they, there's, a, there's a focus on exercise, which is, which is a component, but not the primary component, because... And there's all kinds of great things that, that are associated with exercise and in, in, in improving your, your uh, blood lipid levels, improving your cardiovascular strength, including your muscle tone, including the health of your, your skeletal system, your bones, all these things. However, at the end of the day, food, nutrition is that 800-pound gorilla in the room, and I know this is a subject that's passionate that you're you're passionate about because of your struggles that you've had with food would go ahead and elaborate on that um i was bulimic for probably over 13 years wow um i was even pregnant when i was bulimic i almost lost my child twice it, it, I don't wish this upon anyone it is one of the hardest it's harder than alcohol and drugs 
to to fix, I guess yeah. we could say. It's always a struggle, no matter if you're not actually active, because wherever you go, food is pretty much facing you. So the jug of choice that I had, unfortunately, is the one that has to keep us alive. So I had to learn that food can work for me, not against me, that if done properly, you can eat what you want to eat. Yeah. And it will not make you overweight. It will not kill you. And um, bulimia is a little bit different than anorexia. I'm not starving my body. I'm just overeating a lot and then purging a lot. Right. Which aneurysms can come. Sure. You know, you know, I've had teeth problems. I've had heart problems. And I don't wish it, honestly, it is the worst struggle. It's a deep, dark hole. And I was in a deep, dark hole for over 13 years. And I went away to rehab, put myself away for four, or four months. And so when Pete's saying I'm passionate, I'm passionate with anybody that's dealing with any kind of addiction because you are in that hole and it's a cycle that you've got to learn to break for oh, yourself. Yeah. And so what I tell my addicts, you can live without alcohol, you can live without drugs, you cannot live without food. So if I can get out of that dark hole, by golly, I can help you get out of your, your hole you're digging because uh, food is very important for our bodies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I have the other problem where I overeat too much. And yeah. I didn't even know, like, I've, I've started to recommend, when I mean, here I am 50 years old going, hey, wait, maybe I have a problem with food because I can't, I didn't used to be as heavy as I am mm -hmm. now. And, like, my girlfriend's like, anytime you stand in front of, like, a party table, you're going to eat everything on that table. And I'm like, I don't do that. And t not denial, just no recognition of it whatsoever. And then yeah. I'm like, oh, my God, I can't stop putting, yeah. I literally can't stop putting these things in my mouth. It's insane. Yeah. And so I've been trying to figure out how to get past that. My intention and my output is to, I cannot get them to jive. I used to be one of those, but then I would sneak off and go purge. And I'm going to give you a very graphic scenario. Um, this is how dark of a, of a place I was. I love buffets. Buffets were my dream heaven. And everybody used to say, how do you stay so thin? We're watching you eat. I literally not go in the bathroom, I would go out back and climb in the dumpster so nobody would see me or hear me. And I, I and when now when I think about what well, did, didn't they smell like, maybe I smelled like garbage or trash, you know? Yeah. But you're in such a, a denial of everything. You're in your own world. And I cannot timeline a lot of parties or my life because I was so consumed about food wherever I went. And like a party, cake, chips, everything. I knew I could eat it all, but I knew what my devil was. And so what I tell people now to help them is just put, just put a little bit on each plate and then walk away. Keep that plate with you. Talk and just kind of pick at it and never go back to the table. Because if you can just keep what's on your plate, because it's really, it, it you can't just put one potato chip in your mouth. Right. I don't care who you are. You just yeah. can't do it. So what I've done is, and I've learned, even in my room, I have, I keep M&Ms, but I will take two every day. And I'm pretty good with it. But it's taken me a while to learn how to, to be, um, I guess, obedient to my disorder. But I don't let myself either go without as well. So if we can teach ourselves just to put the plate, walk away from the tables, and just kind of mingle and talk. Because we do. We all get – we just start – because it tastes good. Yeah. You know? And, and just for the folks that are listening and can't, and can't see Andrea, you are in fantastic – in case you didn't know. Oh, okay. You're in fantastic shape. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, Thank you. <laughs> you know, like this, she's having two M&Ms and she's in – World class shape. I mean, you yeah. look fantastic. Thank you, thank yeah. you, thank you. Now I do. You can ask Pete. Um, I'm pretty regiment on how I eat, and it's not like I cut things out and don't have. I just really I eat a lot, but I eat all the right foods, mm. and I try to stay consistent because again, a recovered addict is still an addict, yeah. and if I go way off, I say off my wagon, it, it plays 
a major part in my head at times. And, and I, he can attest to it because I'll say, oh, you know, I have an exercise today. So I just try to stay, even if I don't get an extra uh, workout in, I still stay consistent with my food. Yeah. Yeah. How does exercise, and I, I sort of know some of this about you, but if you could detail it for anybody out there that is thinking about or that the, this conversation is resonating with them about an eating disorder. And, and by the way, overeating, that's, that's, a, yes. that's a form of an eating disorder as well as um, there's several different types, but bulimia, which was your issue, and uh, anorexia. But I, I guess I can only imagine that it's a real struggle to be in that position. And then talk a little bit, if you would, about how exercise has helped you to I don't I don't want to put a word in your mouth but 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 somewhat regulate your behavior um as an athlete growing up I've always been active so I never really had a weight issue at all ever but my freshman year I went into college my coach wanted to um build me up a little bit Mm. make me a little bit bigger if we could take what we know today in the fitness industry and gone back 10 20 years I wouldn't have probably developed it. I didn't develop myself as a strong athlete. It ended up making me a fat athlete Hmm. because I weigh the exact same thing that I did my freshman and sophomore year in college, but I wore three sizes bigger. Wow. And it was just the way they trained me. And But exercise always gave me the feel good. When I was bulimic, I used to take my finger and try to measure my arm. And if they touched, I was good. You're touching your forefinger to your thumb thumb around your bicep, your upper arm. And so I used to, literally, that was my check to make sure I hadn't gained any weight, not getting bigger. When I started working for the Marine Corps, I noticed like some of the women were strong and I knew I was going to have to kind of change how I looked and the things I couldn't even do a pull-up I when I after I came out of rehab and everything and was changing my life I realized how much confident I felt stronger I stood up taller Mm. I walked into a room better and it just made me feel good about who I was and so fitness became actually my feel-good drug, the endorphins that came with it. And it's the funny thing. When I was skinny, I wore really baggy clothes. Like you'd think you'd, wouldn't, you'd show off that you, didn't ha- you were skinny. Yeah. You never saw me in spandex. You never saw me with a bra top on. Now that I'm bigger and stronger... That's all I live in is spandex. It went completely opposite. And it's the darndest thing. Cover up when you're working so hard yeah. to stay skinny. So, But exercise for me, it's not about a lot of women don't like to be big. They don't like to be really strong. That's okay. Mm-hmm. But for me, it, it's, it's my mental check. It lets me know I am mentally strong and extremely healthy. If I start losing muscle for me, I would I think I would go back if I was getting skinny, I'd be scared to become that skinny sick girl again. So my strength helps me keep mentally strong. And I think with exercise in general, if we just move and pick up some weights, I think it will give us more confidence. I know it did me. And yeah. so exercise and I tell my clients this if you cannot do a push-up, and then let's say we it's taken us three months, now you can do five. Don't you feel better? Yeah. Like you've accomplished something, and they'll all tell you yes. Yeah. So I that that's why I think exercise is so important, because you're giving yourself goals. Yeah. You know, and not just to stay thin. You know, you're keeping your heart healthy. Yeah. You're keeping your whole body, but you're keeping your brain healthy. And that is the most important. If we can keep our brain healthy. For sure. I mean... It- as you age, there's three basic things that are something's going to fail at some point. You know, your your mind, your body, or your yeah. spirit. You know, like and, and if your brain is is deprived of the things it needs, everything else 
can fall apart Correct. subsequent to that. So you yes. really have to take care of your brain. Correct. I mean, you might still go crazy. Yes. You know, but that's a genetic problem that you may can't. Yeah, right, right. But as long as I call it, um, if I can keep stay mentally healthy, mentally strong, yeah, and physically healthy. Then mm-hmm. I'm doing it right, right? Because we really—that's where you need to be strong at—is in your, our mental, and then keep your body physically healthy. What have, so, look, everybody who listens—I mean, we got people in all kinds of countries, by the way. So, okay. I was looking today at, at France and all these incredible uh-huh. places. There's there's someone in Saudi Arabia who listens all the time. What up to that person? Uh, the person in the south of Australia. So, they're, we're all busy. Yes. Right. And like I sit there and I all day long on my computer doing podcast mm-hmm. stuff. And every now and then I'll get up and I'll, I'll take I have those uh, uh, Bowflex, uh, you know, dumbbells. And I'll just like if I can get this this a small amount of weight, 20 pounds in each hand above my head, if I can do that, you know, 10 sets of 10 or, you know, five sets of 20, that's at least something. But does it take more than that? I mean, obviously, Pete wants me to do 28 hours of exercise a yeah. month and I need to get to that point. Right. But. You know, we got kids that we got to take to sports, and I got to drive an hour to and from work each day. How do we? How do we at least get the minimum in so we can start to build that momentum? I think you have to put it in your schedule, just like you do your your podcast. You mm-hmm. schedule them, correct? And if you can't make time, you have to write it in your schedule. That's your time. That is your time. Nobody else's time. Your time. And that's why how I like with clients. You know, they, they'll pick their time of day. That's their time. Right. And I think if we make time for ourselves and be selfish for 30 minutes, be selfish for 45 minutes, because that's going to get you to be able to take care of your kids, to roll around with your grandkids, you know, get out and play soccer with yeah. them, whatever you need to do. But schedule it in in your schedule and that will give you accountability t- to keep doing it. Hey, this is P.A. Turner from Lions Rock Productions. We create podcasts around here. And if you, your brand, or your company want to figure out how to do a podcast, just talk to me. I'll give you the advice on the right gear, the best plan, and show you how to take a podcast that makes sense for you, that's sustainable, that's scalable, and fun. Hit me up at Pete at BreakItDownShow.com. Let me help. I want to hear about it. And that will give you accountability to keep doing it. Don't don't find time. Make you know make the time. Yeah, right. you know, so don't start looking for it, because we've got this. A lot of us, uh, a lot of folks have sort of, you know, it's a sort of disordered thinking about the priority of physical fitness and how 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 many things can you put in front of that priority if you have a family. Like, what's more important than you being accountable to your family? And, and that starts with. Your wellness. If you're not a well person, uh, you're not taking care of anybody. You're getting taken care of, and that's 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 just being a drain. So once you you know place it in that in that mind frame, we've all got leisure time. Americans are great at uh, part of the greatness of Americana is um, how many people will watch. Uh, a ball game and then talk about it the next day and we've got we're a country that produces these great athletes and the great spectacles and tradition i'm a fan of college football i played college football and i love the pageantry so we i'm saying you know in if find that we we all find that time pretty 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 naturally and if sports isn't your thing and if it's the arts great i'm going to an art exhibit next week myself great we find time that's important but if you can find time for that you can fi- you can find time to exercise and and that is prioritizing it that's putting it in your schedule and for many many people increasingly that is finding a place to exercise with others yeah. we are a spe- we are a species that thrives collectively we are not a lone wolf that's not the way the human species works we do best together we commune together and the idea of exercising together is a great one and there you have many many options um from any sort of any almost any gym that you can walk to in america your your basic box gym or a globo gym whatever you want to call it 
uh, has if you can I, you can actually you can do a great job of, of of exercising in isolation there if that's your thing. But for many, it's better to go into a group exercise class, whether that's the old step class or some kind of less mills or jazz or size or something like that. And if you want to kind of step it up from there, find a CrossFit gym. They've done a great job of popularizing the idea of exercising as a community. 14, 16, 20 people together at the same time. And now uh, the, the Tough Mudder people, they're doing the same thing. There's no excuse not to find the right kind of exercise that can benefit you and, and change your life. Yeah, I agree totally. Find time, schedule it. Then you'll get the feel for it, and then you'll want to keep continuing because you'll see the benefits from it. In business, you need a mentor. Trainers can be expensive. Sorry. I mean, that's that's true. Like as you try to budget it out, right? How do you find someone who can kind of bridge the gap? Like, again, get you up the ramp or like, Uh I need a fitness mentor who will get me there, but I don't have whatever, whatever amount of money it is. Because that's at least a mental barrier and potentially a financial barrier. Well, if you're at a, I call them Globo gyms, a regular gym, the best thing to do is maybe go find a class that you might like to help you get started or a fitness buddy, a friend. Mm -hmm. If you both are neat, like, you know, your friend needs to lose a few weight pounds and you need to, or you both want to get in shape, start trying to schedule it together. Or if you can't get to the gym together, be accountable. Okay. I'm going here. You're going there. Yeah. This way. And then report back to each other. But again, sort of like the tough, I'm going to go back to tough mudder or boot camps. If you can find a boutique gym, you already ha- have your mentors. You're all doing it together. Yeah. And, and it's 45 minutes. You're in and out. You're with a bunch of group of people pushing each other. And that's a way to do it as well. But if, if you don't have a tough mudder near you, uh, boot camp, a gym, a really, you find a gym buddy. Yeah. Or your friend, or I don't know, a group of people that you might meet. One thing is great if you go to a gym and you stay consistent going, you're going to meet a lot of people. And you might, you will find someone who is right in the same kind of area you mm-hmm. are. Yeah. And you form friendships. That's what's good. It, that's one good thing about fitness, in my opinion, and probably Pete's too, is it brings together people and conversations that you wouldn't have in the outside area yeah it, even from like did you see that guy dunk it a oh, god he's got hops well it's all fitness related you know um but it, it brings you a community fitness brings you a different community even if you're into the arts or the opera or anything else fitness will bring you into a different healthy uh arena and just find a fitness buddy or a boutique gym that you can knock your classes out in 45 minutes. So there's also like, you know, the shame of I'm too fat. I'm disgusting. No one wants to look at me. My agita, my lumbago, my bad knee, my, 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 okay. all of these things. I mean, they get in our way and it's, mm-hmm. it's all fear based. Correct. All right. So, so what do we do? If you can walk, get your courage enough to just walk through the door, you'll find that they were all excuses for yourself. And it's yeah. a fear that it, it, it fear keeps people from exceeding, right? We need to overstep just that ledge, just a tiny bit. And you'll find that that fear and you'll, you'll sit back and go, why was I even fearful? So fear, just realize fear keeps us from moving. It freezes us. And it's like a bunch of chains holding us down. And if you can just step in, and I know one thing I'm going to talk from my experience with Tough Motor Boot Camp is on, you get a free class. And when you walk in, someone might be really, really, you know, scared. You get that welcoming feeling by someone welcoming you to come in it's yeah. okay it's safe we will modify everything for you don't worry you'll be able to do this and we're going to take care of you if you can find that wherever you go you're going to have comfort and if it's a good gym they if you can just get that fear off of you yeah you will be taken care if you're at a good gym they're gonna if you're, you're honest enough and you walk in the door and say you know what i don't know what i'm doing I need somebody to help me. I have all these things that are keeping me from it. Then you'll be, it's handheld. If you're handheld in the beginning, because we all want to feel wanted, we want to feel safe. Yeah. 
because we already have all these fears and anxieties. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, I think if you can just release that little bit of fear and knowing you're going to be taken care of wherever you go in, I think you, you, you've already defeated one thing. I'm just glad I got to say agita and lumbago in a, in a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> I want to segue to what you've been doing most recently since you relocated to L.A. And you've taken your competitiveness and your, your background as an athlete. And I think you're honestly you're just sort of sort of appreciation with, you know, the Hollywood style, which is which is very common, you know, when people move to L.A. And you've worked at it, and you've been a little bit lucky, too, and you've been on television a number of times. And tell me, if my memory serves me, was it the, the Stone Cold? Was that the first show? Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. So you've been competing. Yes, I have been fortunate, again, since I've been out here. I've, um, I was on Steve Austin's Stone Cold Broken Skull. And I was 26 years older than anyone on the show. Yeah. And um, I was doing CrossFit stuff with wrestling. I didn't make it past the first round. However, um, it's taught me a lot of, one, about uh, reality shows. Two, it's opened, like, kind of doorways for Mm. me in other areas. And Steve Austin is just absolutely wonderful. He's funny. There was an incident on the show. I lost my shoe wrestling. And he took my shoe like a prince and said, I've never done this before. You know, he gave me my shoe like <laughs> to the, the princess. But he also reminded me I was the oldest on the show. They've never had a female this old on the show. And we're the exact same age. So I looked at him. I said, you say it one more time. We're the same age. Yeah. But it opens doors in other areas as well, because then I got to work on um, Sylvester Stallone's show, Strong. I was a back trainer. And if I could write a book. Explain what a back trainer is. A back trainer is not the one on television. Mm -hmm. They had all male trainers. I was the one that trained everybody off camera. Okay. And it was women that were battling weight issues, food addictions. So if I could say my life became full circle, that one show really did. I have been a Rocky fan my whole life. During my recovery days, I would write all of his quotes in a journal. So then I'm working on a show called Strong, Mm -hmm. produced by Sylvester Stallone, and then working with people where I used to be. So right then and there, uh, my life became a full total circle, a girl's little dream from yeah. North Carolina working on Sylvester Stallone show. Then I have another one coming up. I can't mention yet, but um, it's really exciting. Um, I, I wish I could say more, but I, I can't right yet. Well, this show can come out later on. If that helps, you want to talk about it because it, it, oh, okay. it won't come out anytime before December 15th because oh. we're already booked out. So Okay. It's called uh, Cannonball. Okay. Again, I was the oldest on the show. I lasted to the semifinals. Everybody will see. And the only female left. Um, <laughs> you're 70 feet in the air mm. and you go down a, a slide that's like a half pike that sends you flying into the air. And there is a boxing bag hanging in the middle of a lake. You have to try to tag that bag as high as you can. Yeah. And when you're looking at that bag, you're flying. What? Yeah, I mean, when I say flying, yeah. I felt like Superman for a second. Yeah. I literally flew back by the bag, and I'm going, oh, no, I'm passing it. So I lay out my leg, and I kick the bag. So that was one. The, the second one is... Wait, hold on, hold on. You're flying through the air. You're flying it, through the air. Give me some... Uh, I need some... Respect. Air time. You're 70 foot and then? water slide. <laughs> and then I was 10 foot up in the air when I kicked the bag. Okay. So... And then you land in water? You land right in water. Okay. And okay. it's it, it hurts. Yeah. I mean, you're flying. Oh, when I say on. 70 foot, it's like a, a pike, half sure. pike. Yeah, and yeah, so yeah. when you hit that pike, yeah, yeah, yeah. you just go like Zoom. a bullet. Yeah. It's a bullet. Yeah. So I'm literally up there. My legs are shaking. I'm like, what have I gotten myself it's scary into? Then. Yeah. Yeah. I'm scared. Yeah. And I even told the guys, I am 53 years old. What, what have I got myself into? <laughs> Seriously. Right. The, the, what about the, my answer to? The boys are 24 and 25, and I literally called them my boys. They were yeah. old enough to be my ch- children. Yeah. 
So then the second one is called a torpedo. Mm. You're holding on to a rope and you're wrapping your leg <laughs> on a torpedo. It's a torpedo. They release it. Oh, my gosh. So you're being flown, but you got to see this target. And they don't tell you where the target is or anything until you're released. Yeah. And you got to jump off of this torpedo right. and try to land on the target, and you're 50 feet in the air. So this is almost like a zip line with a torpedo attached, and you're hugging the torpedo. Right. And then you're releasing and trying to hit a target. Correct. But you're the, you're the projectile. Correct. Okay. <laughs> okay. So then... We're 50 feet in the air. When you walk a plank, there is a surfboard on a zip line. You have to jump onto the surfboard. Holy shit. Okay. So now you're on a thin plank yeah. walking. 50 feet in the air. There's the only thing under there is water. Yeah. So that was scary. But then you had to jump on the surfboard. As soon as your feet land on that surfboard, <coughs> it takes off <coughs> over the water on a zip line. So wow. you're surfing in air, in trying air. not to fall. And they said, keep your eyes on the bubbles. That's where you need to get to. Uh-huh. So that was really, 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 really scary. Yeah. And then. And how high are you in the 50 air? feet. The whole time. The whole time. Oh, wow. Until the end. Until If you can make it. Yeah. To the end. So um, I started in fourth place, moved up to the second, the third place. The surfing got me second place. So then the final one is my most disappointing one because it was weight-based. Uh-huh. And the three of us were all the same, about the same weight. We stood a second apart. But then the weight-based ones were like two minutes to a minute and a half while we were in the seconds, like 48 seconds, 49 mm-hmm. seconds. And you have a fire hose. Again, you're 45 feet in there. A ball. The fire hose shoots through the ball, so the water pressure shoots out of the ball. Your feet are on this little ball, and you are holding on to the fire hose. 45 feet in there, and they shoot the, <laughs> the pressure. You start, yeah, and you got to hold on. The fire hose is swinging everywhere. Yeah, I'm, I'm upside down. You're trying to control the nose of a fire hose, but up way up in the air, not, yeah. Correct, yeah. correct. Wow. And when it throws you. Yeah, you stay thrown. You, you stay thrown. Yeah. So that was, and I, so I don't know what the final is yeah. because we, you don't get to see anybody compete. Mm-hmm. You don't get to see what you're doing until you so get up there. So isolation. Yes. Yeah. Wow. So you never know what it actually looks like till you yourself are up there to get on the uh, equipment. Crazy. And it was crazy. 53 and I am flying in the air. Obviously, you know how to swim well. Yes. 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 Yeah. Yes, yeah. That's one thing. Again, my dad, I grew up on the river was my um, my uh, backyard, and my dad had me on water skis when I was like seven years old. So water and me are friends, but when you're up that high, it hurts when you land. I swam around Coronado Island recently in a relay, so I just did uh-huh. little legs multiple times. And one, aircraft carriers are huge. When you swim next to one, I'm like, when will this fucker end? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to make it to the end of it. And then I didn't, yeah. you know, like, your time is up. It's yeah. just so big. And the other thing is, is um, when you swim in a pool a lot, you know, I'm a good swimmer. I can uh-huh. swim all day. But when you can't see, um, you don't know where you're going. And then there's going to be a current. And, like, there are so many things to yes, account for in there, the ocean. There is. Like, I'm swimming my heart out. And I'm like, I feel like I'm just going to the right. Yeah. So I would correct to the left. And then end up back, to, and I'm like, why am I sucking so? And you just have no point of rep, right? Ocean right. swimming is totally it different. It is. Thing. I started a triathlon in North Carolina that's still going. And I remember people training in um, salt water mm-hmm. to swim in a lake, and they sank. Yeah. Because totally it's different. totally, you have to, when you're competing, you've got to know what kind of water you're swimming in because yeah. training in salt water, you have your buoyancy. To, and they were just sinking as they were going. I saw so many people fail the swimming. Yeah. yeah. For a while, I thought I couldn't swim, which is clearly yeah. not the case. And I'm like, I am so bad at this. And then also, I was swimming with two people that are Olympic caliber swimmers. So you see them get in the water, and they're just like, whoosh, 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 whoosh. Just like, oh, like yeah. oh, what the hell? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> so oh, yeah. So being in the military, you probably know about swimming with your all your uh, – Equipment on. Oh yeah, no problem. And yeah. I can I can haul equipment too. Like you can give me a bag, and yeah. so I can do it. I yeah. can do all of the swim. It's just, just you know, I I had to train in a pool because I'm not going to go swim in the ocean by myself. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. That's too much. But uh, yeah, it was really. 
humbling oh, yes. to go and be ready. Yeah. And then get there and be like, one, I, I mostly had to calm down. Yeah. I had to just relax. I started drinking salt water right away. Yeah. Not because I'm bad, but just just because the wave hit me in the face mm. and you know, one thing yeah. I, and I swallowed it and I'm like, oh, gulp, gulp. And I'm like, oh no, that's going to be bad yeah. for a while. Yeah. 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 Crazy. I didn't slide down a 50 foot lead. Oh. Though. <laughs> it, I'm, I'm telling you. So crazy. It was, it was the most insane thing at 53 I've done. Now, if I was 20 some, I could see myself do it. 53 when I literally, when I saw every competition challenge, I literally was like, what am I doing? What am I doing? This is crazy. Yeah. And now do you get calls all the time like, hey, that Andrea lady, she's old. She'll do it. And then you're like, <laughs> <laughs> after this show, because, um, even the uh, casting people and then even the crew, everybody asked me if I was a stunt person. Right. I'm like, I, I, no, this is scaring me. No. <laughs> <laughs> but after doing that, you, you, I could probably do stunts after you see this kind of craziness. Yes. Yeah. 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 Stunts are hard. We had a stunt man on the show um, and he was riding a horse in a Planet of the Apes costume and it was all foam and they were going across the river and he's like, he was having to hold up all this water weight. And try to ride a horse professionally. Uh, and he's like, he damn near killed the horse and himself because just no one had thought like, oh, this thing's a giant sponge. Yeah. And it was, you know, it's so, and, and if you weren't as fit as he, and he's fit like you are, like you see him and you're like, God damn, you're fit. Um, you, you have to be that kind of physical, you know, physically in shape. You're not just reckless. Yeah. Like he's a pro. And yeah. I couldn't, I, he might've died if he was 150 pounds and didn't oh, have yeah. any strength, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Well, uh, we did have a few people got a little injured on the show. Um, one person got a black eye as GoPro. He hit head on that bag I told you about. <laughs> Bullseye. Bullseye, yeah. Had a big old shiner. Yeah. So it was fun, though. I, I have one question about, uh, yeah. and you don't have to answer this one. We can cut it out. But um, do you get compensated no matter what, like for showing up? Like the people on Survivor that are there for two months, they don't just leave their jobs. No, no. Like the bigger shows, when I worked on Strong, they yeah. got paid because they're, they're staying there um, weekly. Right. They do get compensated. We got small compensation daily yeah. rate. But the ones that are spending the night on the shows and staying a week do at a time. Do you end up in the guild then because you do have enough lines and everything? No. No, okay. No. Reality show is totally different. Right. Yeah. Interesting. Yes, yeah. I, I've, I've really in the reality world. I I've trained um, two of the three of the Beverly Hills Housewives, and I was on one of their episodes. And I've seen how things are done in the reality world. Yeah. It's totally different than probably what Pete does. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm more the reality. I've been in behind, with the reality world more. Yeah, you have any more? Well, I no, I think that's great. Just to, uh, what I, it's been so interesting because folks might want to know, like, so Andrea's we're each other's training partner. So, um, just to step back just a little bit in terms of, in some of the messaging that I hope that people can take away when it comes to fitness is that no matter what your current level of condition is, don't feel like you're just operating all by yourself. You can change that very easily in this day and age. And it's not expensive to find the right gym or the right place or, or free to find a training partner. And whether you're running, you know, whether you want to go out and take a run or start by just walking and hiking, find somebody to do that. I know when Andrew and I work out together, we, we agree that our we probably train together about 75 percent of the time. Mm-hmm. And then, um, but I notice a difference when and she does too. When we're not training together, it's a little bit different energy. We tend to push each other a little bit. So <clears throat> here, you can be my size, six feet six, two hundred and forty pounds, and have a fifty-year-old woman as your as your as your training partner. I do it to great effect. So if you follow me and you know what I look like on social media, or find uh, Andrea at uh, Ailey Fitness on IG and, and, and follow along her and, and, and feel free to use us as an example or motivation to, to exercise. And, and exercise has been an important part of my life and, and being physically fit. Same thing for Andrea, which is just to circle back. You know, that sort of launched her into the reality. In comp- it's really like a reality competition uh, as, you know, as, a, as now as another component to uh, – what what Andrea does with her life and her persona. You guys can find 
Andrea Logan at Ailey Fitness, A L E I G H Fitness on Instagram. And of course, find your local mud, tough mudder boot camp yes. and join those gyms yes. because that's going to be great. And and as an adult, like I, I thought the other day, like in high school, I love PE. It was never long enough, you know? Oh, yeah. It was yeah. just great. But this is like adult PE. Like you get it to is. go out and have a 55, 45 minute class and you do something cool and you're just like, oh man, I wish I had more, but now I'm on to the next thing. Yeah, yeah. And one thing that is physical education, boutique gyms, fitness, it can be play and it can be fun. It's what we put in it. <laughs>